Hi all, I have another amazing and interesting game to show you from the Your Next Move Blitz. So played in Leuven, Belgium, very recently. 1st of July 2017. Magnus Colson playing against Wesley So. We see D4, D5. And already the game for me is, is interesting. Magnus continues this trend of playing Bishop F4. And you might wonder if he wants a London system, why doesn't he just play Knight F3? Don't most normal play people like in live book he's confounding live book because knight f3 does it have a downside and technically from the evidence of this game i believe this game shows it does have a downside compared to bishop f4 it's less flexible it's actually interrupted the d1 to h5 diagonal to play knight f3 this way of getting into the london system may in the future or even now be regarded as an early version of the London system move order. So let me show you some evidence why with, with the evidence of this game. Why would this be a downside interrupting that diagonal? Well, let's see. With bishop f4, that bishop is often a target later for black and sometimes black might even want to use some pawns to kick the bishop. The bishop is on a dark square. So if black later kicks the bishop, Black's weakening light squares. Just bear that in mind. So sometimes we want to keep control of light squares as a result of the bishop being kicked. C5, and we have London system without the knight f3 emerging. Not yet knight f3. This diagonal has been kept free. Uh, so we have knight c6, c3, Queen b6. So yeah, it's a London system without knight f3. Queen b3. Black shouldn't really, doesn't really tend to take here because of the dynamic, dynamic play white gets on the a file. Plays knight f6. White plays knight d2. Again, delaying knight f3. This diagonal is being kept clear, basically. c4. This is this looks very, very typical London system moves. Queen c2, knight h5. Now that is hitting the bishop. It's actually on a light square. And guess what? Because we've kept this diagonal clear, we can kick this knight with bishop e2 with tempo. If the knight was on f3, we wouldn't be able to. Why is that important? Isn't this just trivia, what I'm saying here? Is it just pure trivia? h6 weakening light squares bishop h4 g5 weakening more light squares but here's the kicker why doesn't have to play bishop g3 here he hasn't played knight f3 the facility which has been maintained from the start is this diagonal so guess what magnus colson plays in this position with a slight advantage technically if i give you five seconds Bishop e2, yes, we haven't played knight f3, we can play bishop e2. The knight's crawling back. Instead of taking on g3, it's crawling back into a finchetto position. Yes, it does support bishop f5, but this bishop is now the painful London system bishop has not been swapped off with knight h5 takes g3. In many variations uh, of the London system with knight f3, this bishop's a goner, basically. Here it's on the board, it's hitting that hard, that diagonal. Black's committed his pawn structure, so the formatic thing to do is blow the pawn structure with e4 later or b3. For the moment, yes, Black's got a temporary grip, grip on e4, it seems, and kicks the queen with tempo. But White has got his ideal bishops, they're ready for action. After e6, now knight f, knight g f3. This knight's over there, this knight's safely installed on g3 basically queen a5 and now we can hit the pawn center hard especially after this move queen a5 this might not have been the greatest move because it walks straight into e4 white wants to play this formatic move anyway so it's kind of made this formatic move even stronger let's have a quick look what should have black played in this position it just seems a bit anti formatic maybe black should have actually tried does this work? There's bishop e5. 
So this, this bishop might actually be going off the board. But even here, now, in this position, there's knight h4. So it's not a clear-cut case of, of going for bishop g3 still. Yeah, this this is a slight advantage for white. If knight g7 we just take on uh, f6, no, not take on f6, because we've got hang knight, we take on f5 first. That's better for white. Okay, so uh, yeah, maybe a move like bishop e7, but this this move looks like anti formatic It's like saying, okay, I your formatic moves. I'm just going to make them even more effective. So e4, totally formatic move. Try and blow black's pawn center. Bishop h7. Yes, it seems as though black's done sensible things in a way, but in a way he hasn't. Structurally, this is prone to damage. After ED, the, the exploitable base of the pawn chain has been brought forward. So any bishop f3 later is going to be hard hitting for black on d5. It seems as though black's got active pieces. Everything by the book of some sort, it seems. But white has basically got a very, very good version of the London system with this fantastic bishop and the ability to just mine this pawn center at leisure. Uh, white castles, we have rook e1. Black castles. Now, a fascinating move as well, actually. Knight e5, but basically vacating f3 for the bishop. So he wants to like hit this pawn uh, chain hard at d5. Knight takes, bishop takes, f6 weakening even some more light squares. Bishop g3, but white is ready for taking on d5 and bishop f3 now pretty soon. h4, b5. Before b4 happens, which could be advantageous for white, sorry, for black to do, we have b4 from white. And there's another point of the pawn chain. It's not just d5, but b5 that's hit. If black goes passive, then bishop f3 is very nice. White's just getting his dream position. <clears throat> black plays a5, though, here. a5. a takes, a takes, rook takes. And now e takes, we're finally going to get in this bishop f3 with immediate venom of knight takes c4, it seems. This this looks like an immediate threat now in the position knight takes c4. The queen really hasn't been helping this formatic, um, the formatic ideas. Knight takes c4 is the key threat here, queen d8. So the queen is struggling to hold on to d5, basically. This is the outcome. These bishops are raking bishops. b6, trying to distract the queen away to blow this pawn chain to smithereens. If queen takes, then bishop takes d5 and that drops. b takes, and this is exactly what happens now, because there's a threat. Because of this wonderful bishop maintained through the move order that it wasn't taken off, there is now a threat of b7 and b8 queening. So that has to be addressed. So black is now a pawn down with a miserable position. His center gone, vanished. Knight e3, we have rook d8. Queen c7, now threatening knight c4 and queen takes e7. Black is on the defensive. That bishop is maintained, even at this point in the game, and p goes back to h2 now. That knight is not having this bishop. Even though the king is like has less air, rather have this position, keeping that bishop along that beautiful diagonal. Now uh, we have the move knight f4, blunting the bishop at the cost of pawn structure. Though, if the, the rook did persist in going back, uh, say to d8, bishop f3. This is just hitting uh, there. And then say knight d5, white is much, much better here. In fact, look f looks forward to, well, many, many things. So, yeah, white's got all the positional trump cards here after knight f4. The structure is totally wrecked after takes knight c4, threatening bishop e6, skewering. Queen f5, pinning. So bishop e6 ruled out. Or is it the knight's holding a5? Let's have a quick look here. Queen a7 was played. I, I think just taking gets out of it anyway. This this is just actually this is just uh, not good. Bishop b4. Uh, black's equalized here. 
so uh, we have queen a7 keeping the pressure and in fact that bishop can't well there's pressure along the whole seventh rank here if the bishop did move to b4 I, I believe there's something nasty here with the bishop on h7 in the form of bishop e4 but let's just check this this position if bishop b4 well there's queen f7 even nastier yeah so there's various points of attack these three points of attack along the seventh so we have uh, queen takes d5 was played queen takes e7 check but now knight b6 full king queen and rook and that's it so if there's one secret of this game hidden secret nuance which maybe not be appreciated by all the london system players worldwide from this game example is the question that you might never have asked is have you been playing knight f3 to achieve the london system setup too routinely did you notice that sometimes this diagonal is useful to keep clear because you don't want a pesky knight taking off your dark square bishop you want that dark square bishop to be a total pain throughout most of the game so from the outset to be able to maintain the painful bishop this move order with bishop f4 delaying knight f3 is interesting to consider comments questions like shares appreciated and especially from london system players if what i've said makes any sense or rings true let me know thanks very much